Welcome to Spirit Speaks. I'm your host, Lisa Virtue. Welcome to the series of short videos that I'm doing here with Nancy Dannison, who has had a very profound near-death experience and has agreed to share little snippets of what she's learned. So welcome back to the show, Nancy. Thank you, Lisa. So today I wanted to cover in our first hour-long video, which uh, if you haven't seen that, you can just click here to watch the hour-long video where Nancy explains everything about her near-death experience. You uh, kind of rattled off a list of the things that you asked Source when you arrived. And so I'm going to read the list, which was, uh, who was God? Who am I? What's the purpose of life? Why am I on earth? Where is heaven and where is hell? And what's the one true religion? Now, I know you answered a lot of these in the longer video, but I thought it would be fun to answer them just in these snippets so that people can just um, go directly to them if they want. So why don't we start with the big one? Who is God? What did you learn when you left the planet and crossed over to the other side? I learned that we are God. I learned that there is no one uh, human-like male uh, deity with you know long hair and beard and flowing robes. That's a, a way for humans to connect with a deity, and that's a way for humans to, you know, identify with the deity. But what I learned and what I encountered was a an infinite, unconditionally loving, intelligent creative, curious, funny, warm, giving energy field is the best term I can give it. You might think of it as a consciousness, a universal or infinite consciousness or a universal or infinite mind or intelligence, but it doesn't have any physical form at all. And it doesn't really resemble anything <laughs> that you, know, you could encounter in human life. So that's why I call it an energy field, because it was full of energy. And it sort, I call it source, because it's an energy source. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant name, huh? Uh, and it didn't have a name. I specifically asked, if, you know, I got, you know, blank, stare. Not, <laughs> not that it has a face, stare. But. And so how were you interacting with source? Source communicates telepathically. And without straying too far into our other questions, um, and this feels like such a big question, how do you explain the existence in relation to the source? Like, how does that relate what we think of as existence and, and what you know source to be? Source is the source of life. It's the source of everything. Source created the universe within its own mind. The universe is manifested, and manifested is a term that I learned in the afterlife that means something that Source has imagined and intended to exist, and that humans perceive to be physical matter reality. And so the entire universe is, for lack of a better term, kind of like a dream or a vision in Source's mind. So everything in the universe, including all the creatures and all the things and the environment and the planets and the stars and the, you know, everything else, exists in Source's imagination. And through imagining something, Source gives it life. Mm. And that life can be further enhanced when source puts its own self-awareness and self-consciousness into something. And it works a little bit like how when we dream, you know, we create an environment like the universe. And we have characters in there, like the creatures and the things the source imagined in the universe. And we're always a character in the dream. You know, we're always inside a character, usually the same 
character we play during the day, but we're always watching the dream from inside a dream character that's us. Well, Source mm -hmm. does that too. It puts itself, its perspective, inside not just one dream character in the universe, but all of them. Everything. And that's how it experiences physical matter, physical reality, and physical life. So Source is everything from a rock to a tree to a planet uh, to gases and human beings, just everything. Everything. What we call the part of Source, the, the part of Source is self-awareness that's inside all those things. We call it a soul. Wow. So in the question, what is God, ultimately, that even seems so limited because it's just like this human perception of something that doesn't encompass every single thing. I've read near-death experience accounts of other people who've had the same or you know, very similar experience to what I had. And I don't see how a human who hasn't had that same afterlife experience could possibly come up with this idea or this belief. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I think what our religions teach us and what our spiritual precepts teach us are the best we can do just using human yes. experience and human logic. But there's mm -hmm. so much more and near death experiencers offer us that window into the infinite. Yes. People have so resonated with what you're sharing. I mean, we've got lots of people viewing the videos and your books. And I was going to ask you what it is that you think that draws people to your story. One of the things I learned in the afterlife out of the 50 million things that I learned was that <laughs> some things are true, whether you believe them or not. And those things that are true, whether we currently believe them or not, I call universal truths. Mm -hmm. And when we hear them, we often recognize them. And that's why we resonate. I mean, I've been blown away by the people who write to me and say, oh, I read your book and it resonated with me. And I, it's exactly what I've always thought. I'm just sitting there thinking, it took me seven years to integrate that material and, you know, to get used to the fact that my old beliefs, you know, weren't true anymore. And here are people read one book and boom, they've got it. So, you know, we all have different abilities to recognize the truth when we hear it. Right. But I think that's, that's what they're calling resonating. They just, they remember it. Yeah. You know? When we get back in the afterlife, we know it all again. You know, we remember it all again. Yeah, it's just, it's feeling so familiar that they can't mm -hmm. deny it in a way. Yeah, and what I'm loving about what's happening on the planet now is people are really seeming to open up more and more to all of these, I'll just call them the spiritual ideas that uh, are in line with what the near-death experiencers are sharing. Mm -hmm. And it feels to me like, like an evolution taking place for us um, and all of this wave of, of people being open to spiritual ideas that are beyond the dogma of a particular religion um, shows that we're starting to, in a way, remember home and remember what that was like and think, yeah, that's, that does feel true, something beyond. Lisa, the work you're doing contributes greatly to that effort. You are a, okay. what some people call a light worker. You are a wonderful part of source that's trying to enlighten other people. Thank you. Well, that's, you know, why I'm doing the videos is to get this out there. And I know, I mean, I'm, I have been curious about near-death experience stories because of how they resonate and and I see that other people are as well. And we just, you know, consume it voraciously because for me, it reminds me of truth. It reminds me of home and that we're just more than the limited negative things that we can get caught up in. And it just reminds me that, you know, there is a bigger story to it all. And it's, it's very uplifting. So I wanted to share that with everyone. And that's why I wanted to do the series with you as well, because the more it's out there, the more people can start feeling empowered uh, in their current life form, dream state of being source in a human body. I wanted to recommend to your viewers a website where there are 
about 4,000 near-death experience accounts. It's the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation website, and it's N-D-E-R-F dot O-R-G. And it's a wonderful resource. You can read, you know, you can search near-death experiences by topic, you can, by name, you can read as many or as few as you want, and it doesn't take as long as watching videos on YouTube. <laughs> That's right. I have been on that site for years. I voraciously go through, they have a category for exceptional experiences. And so I'm always like, who's new on there? Uh, They blow me away. Yeah, that is a fantastic resource. Thank you for mentioning that. All right, we've come to the end of this nugget of uh, information from the afterlife that you've so graciously shared with us. And I'm looking forward to more in our series. So thank you so much, Nancy. You're welcome. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to hit subscribe and click on the little bell so that you can be informed when the next video comes out. See you next time.